Design of combined footing. In this video, we will design a combined footing for a building structure. The problem statement says that design a rectangular combined footing to support two columns of a building structure. The exterior column having the cross section of 16 inches by 16 inches, which carries the dead and live load of 175 kips and 110 kips respectively, while the interior column having the cross section of 20 inches by 20 inches carries the dead and live load of 220 kips and 120 kips respectively. The columns are 16 feet apart from center to center and the property line is 2 feet from the exterior column. The allowable soil pressure is 5.5 ksf or kips per square foot and the bottom of the footing is 5 feet from the final grade. The material strength is 4000 ksi and uh, steel strength fi is 60 ksi design the footing using asi strength method so in this we have to design a footing uh, combined footing so let's translate the question into our uh, problem uh, Let's translate the Let's translate the information given in the problem to this diagram. So this is our column 16 inches by 16 inches. Uh, this is our exterior column and the interior column dimension is uh, 20 inches. Uh, let me write it down again and uh, this is 20 inches and the other dimension is also 20 inches so both has a square column and the loads that come from the structure are uh, coming to the base of the columns are dead load on the exterior column is 175 caps and in the live load is uh, in the question it is given 110 caps. Similarly, for the interior column, dead load and live load is uh, dead load is uh, 220 caps and live load is 120 caps. So these are the load which is being applied on the uh, columns, and uh, the total uh, depth of the footing is uh, which we can say at Z is five foot from the final grade. And this is our ground, ground level, this is ground and the total depth of the footing is H that we have to design. So the remaining part will be uh, ground portion which will be Z minus H. The pro this is our property line and mm, distance from the center of the column to the property line is 2 feet and the distance from center to center is 16 feet. However, this extension of the footing we have to calculate and this is an unknown so let's move ahead and then we will start our solution uh, our material properties were fc prime 4000 psi and our fi steel is 60000 psi and our soil pressure or our allowable soil pressure or our allowable bearing capacity of soil which is given in question is 5.5 ksf or kibs per square foot per square foot okay so this is our data that has been provided in the problem solution Step 1 of our solution is to calculate the base area of our combined footing and in order to do that we will calculate the length and width of our footing as it is a rectangular footing so we need to calculate length and width of our footing
according to ACI, fifteen point two point two it states that to calculate the base area of a footing we need to use service loads and allowable bearing capacity or allowable soil pressure now in order to calculate the length of the footing we need to locate the horizontal of the loads that are being applied on the column so let's say resultant uh, x bar and uh, of the loads on the columns let's say uh, p is our load so total service load on exterior column will be equal to 175 kips plus 110 kips this comes out to be 275 kips and similarly total service load on interior column will be equal to uh, 220 plus 120 kips and this is equal to 340 caps. So now to calculate the resultant, we have to take the moment at the center of the column, either the interior column or the exterior column. As we are using equilibrium equations, it will not matter if we choose exterior or the interior column. So in this, we will take the moment at the exterior column at the center of the exterior column so x bar multiply with the total load which is service load equal to 340 which is the service load applied on the interior column multiplied by 16 which is distance 275 multiply with 0 because at this point we are calculating the moment so p will be p1 plus p2 and uh, 340 into 16 comes out to be 5440 caps and uh, uh, p1 plus p2 will be 340 plus 275 equal to 5440 so x bar will be equal to 5440 divided by 625 which is our total service load so x bar comes out to be 8.704 fit so this is our resultant which is acting from the in, uh, exterior column so the distance of this resultant from the property line because if we know that the property line is two feet from the center of the exterior column so the distance of the resultant from the property line will be equal to 2 plus x bar so 2 plus uh, and x bar will be equal to uh, 10.7 zero four fit so uh, now we know that the resultant of all the loads act at this point of the footing so this means that we know half of the length of the footing in field to reduce the eccentricity the centroid of the footing should coincide with the resultant of the footing however in this we are assuming that the loads are being applied at exactly the center position of the column and we are neglecting the eccentricities that are being produced on the footing so uh, now uh, the total length of the footing will be uh, we have to multiply 10.704 feet with 2 in order to calculate the total length which will be 2 plus 16 plus our unknown and then we can calculate our unknown also so length will be equal to 10.704 multiplied by 2 which is 21.41 feet and this comes out to be 21 feet and 5 inches 
so this is our uh, length total length of the combined footing so from the property line to the extent at which we have to provide the footing is this after this we have to calculate the area of the footing and in order to determine the area of the footing first we need the depth of the footing or the age that we uh, have to assume first of all so assuming that the age of the footing is uh, equal to um, we can take for this question three feet or 36 inches you can take from two and a half feet or uh, but the age depth of the footing should be higher than the any dimension of the column that the footing is supporting so we have interior and exterior column with the 16 inches and 20 inches so it should be greater than at least 20 inches so uh, after resuming age we can find d which is the effective depth so 36 inches minus 3 inch cover minus 1 inch bar and minus half inch of the upper uh, layer of the bar or reinforcement so this gives us d uh, equal to uh, 36 inches So this gives us D equal to 31.5 inches. So after D, we have to calculate uh, Q effective or la, uh, effective bearing capacity of the soil. So in order to calculate that, we will utilize Q allowable, allowable bearing capacity of soil minus the weight that is due to the concrete and the soil on the uh, uh, soil pressure so uh, QE is our effective bearing capacity and uh, QE will be equal to 5.5 gibbs per square foot so this is gibbs per square foot uh, minus and this is uh, omega C multiply with 3 its depth uh, let me make a bracket minus plus omega s which is for soil into uh, z minus h uh, so this will be equal to 5.5 minus uh, this profit square minus our omega unit density of uh, concrete is 0 0.15 because we are working in fit so multiply with 3 plus uh, 0. Point, we can take 0. 0.0011 or 0. 0.12 or 0. 0.125 multiply with 2 so after calculating this the answer is 4.83 kips per feet square so this is our effective bearing capacity of uh, soil after applying the weight of the uh, footing in the soil so once we have that uh, now we can calculate the area of the footing so area of the footing will be area required equal to p total service load divided by q effective so service load is 625 divided by 4.83 tips per foot square so it this comes out to be uh, 129.66 square feet so uh, let's take approximately uh, 130 feet square and width of the footing we can calculate by simply using the area of a rectangle which is length into width so a equal to l into w and a is 130 uh, square feet 
uh, and L we have calculated 21.41 multiply by width so uh, uh, getting the width out of it will be equal to 6.07 fit or 6. Point, uh, we can take it as a conservative 6.5 fit for the width of the footing and now we have the width of the footing and the length of the footing so we can calculate the actual area of the footing which is um, uh, 6.5 multiplied by 21.41 6.5 multiplied by 21.41 fit and this is equal to around 139.16 uh, fit square so we can take it as 140 fit square so this is our area.